Court finding New York made at least $11 billion in improper unemployment payments during the pandemic. But it also claims the exact amount of fraud is unknown due to Department of Labor officials refusing to provide the data. Joining us now, National Taxpayers Union Executive Vice President Brandon Arnold. Uh, Brandon, surely you've got a lot to say about this, and this number could even be bigger than we know of based on that, right? Yeah, I think this is the tip of the iceberg. Listen, we see $11 billion in the state of New York. A similar report from California said $11 billion there. Nationally, the Government Accountability Office says $80 billion in unemployment insurance fraud. But that is only the start of it. There's private estimates that say this problem could be a $400 billion problem. It's an enormous problem. And yet the Department of Labor and other officials in this administration have put their head in the sand and have refused to answer questions from Congress. Brandon, we did receive a statement from the New York State Department of Labor. It reads in part, quote, our system acted as a critical lifeline for nearly five million New Yorkers. The New York State Department of Labor is already implementing changes to improve the system and address the audit's findings. We're stepping up our fraud investigations and we've made data on UI benefits available on a new public dashboard. Does that bring you any comfort, Brandon? No, I mean, that's the start of the problem, I mean, the start of the solution, but there's so much more to be done. The first problem is getting a full assessment of what's taken place. We know there are all sorts of bad actors out there who have set up fraudulent websites, who have stolen people's private information and filed unemployment insurance claims in their names, but we don't know the extent of the problem and we're not going to solve it until we know the full extent of the problem. There have been multiple bills introduced by Republicans on Capitol Hill to provide the investigatory tools that we need and the enforcement tools that we need, but they've been swept aside by House Democrats and Senate Democrats. They have not gotten the attention that they need. And hopefully, with the Republican House of Representatives, at least, we can start to shine a little bit of light on this massive, massive problem. Well, they, the statement they issued seems to be an admission uh, that all of this happened. Why do you think they're not providing the rest of the data so we really know the extent, the full extent of this fraud? Yeah, I mean, that's a great question. We've gotten stonewalled by so many different entities. Yeah. Secretary Walsh at the Department of Labor, Merrick Garland at the Department of Justice. Everybody seems to want to sweep this mm -hmm. under the rug. It may be a bit of embarrassment because they've been hoodwinked by so many yeah. bad actors out there. We don't know. But the first step is identifying the problem because the effect right now, it's more than just lost revenue. What we're seeing in states, because they have these enormous shortfalls, they're starting to raise taxes on businesses, oh. on small businesses. Yeah during the brink of a recession. This is unconscionable. All right. We appreciate you coming on on that, Brandon. We're going to continue to follow it. Thank you. Thanks so much. Meantime